Do you struggle with impulsive purchases and going shopping when you're feeling blue and gloomy and then having a front porch full of boxes that you can't even remember why you ordered the things you ordered or coming home from the mall with bags and bags of things that you are probably not going to use but briefly made you feel a little bit better before ruining your budget. If you struggle with impulse spending, then this video is for you. Hello, I'm Sarah Edens. I'm a finance coach, author, and wealth mindset researcher. And here on my channel, we talk about wealth mindset and finance skills. And if you'd like to learn how to unlock your inner millionaire by developing wealth mindset and good finance skills and financial habits, then please come and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And you can also follow me over on Instagram. I'll link to that in the description below. And over there every week I do a live Q&A session. And so that's called Ask a Finance Coach Anything with me, Sarah Edens, your favorite finance coach. And that's your opportunity to ask me all of your finance questions and be able to ask them completely anonymously and be able to kind of get that time to have your questions answered. So please do come follow me on Instagram as well. I'd love to have you there for my weekly Q and A's. And if you look in my bio on my Instagram, it'll have the next scheduled live, live stream that's coming up and the time. <clears throat> And excuse me, and you can set a reminder and do all that good stuff. And so you can not miss the next live stream as well. So today we're talking about getting impulse spending under control. And this is something that I think a lot of people struggle with from time to time. I think, you know, we all have great capacity to be disciplined. And so it's not that it's a lack of discipline if you have issues with impulse spending. It's more just that you might have lapses, which we all have lapses where, you know, perhaps we're just not being as mindful about the way we're spending our money, or we've maybe had something really stressful happen that day, like a really bad day at work, or an argument with a friend or family member, or something that was really upsetting in the news, or, you know, it just feels like every time we turn around, there's something that is upsetting and stressful and difficult. And so the way that we deal with that, though, is very important, especially when it comes to money, if the way that you deal with stress is by shopping. And there's a word for this, it's called retail therapy. I've definitely done this before and more times than I would like to admit. I know definitely when I was in my 20s in particular, I didn't know how to budget. I didn't know anything about financial planning or financial anything. It was just this black box, I had no idea. I had access to way too many credit cards that all the stores I shopped at were always happy to open those store cards for me. And so I had a stack of, well, probably not that big, but I had a stack of store credit cards that I would happily whip out and use. And if I just, I love to shop. I'm, I'm one of these people that, can I, can I admit that? I think I can admit that, that I'm a, I'm a finance coach, but I love to shop. I don't think those have to be incompatible. I've just gotten my shopping more in line with my budget these days, but I love to shop. And so I think that, when I was in my 20s though, what I did was I just shopped and shopped and shopped every time I had a bad day or any time I was feeling stressed or even when I wasn't stressed, I shopped. And so I ended up with a lot of credit card debt and it got very, very expensive. And then the issue with impulse shopping, and you've probably experienced this yourself as well, is that you feel a little bit better by going shopping and buying something pretty to cheer yourself up or buying something new, you do feel a little bit better. You get that little lift, that little boost. So I'm not saying that there's nothing to retail therapy. There's definitely something there. But then after the shopping is over and you come home or you've been ordering online and you a couple days later your spouse is like what is this huge stack of amazon boxes on the front porch and you're like oh i don't I have no idea <laughs> where did that come from you know and, and trying to kind of hide things that you bought maybe from your your spouse or your partner because you're just embarrassed to admit 
that you handled your stress in a way that was sort of counterproductive to your financial goals. So this is your little guide to how to stop doing this to yourself while still being able to enjoy going shopping. And then in fact, once you get your impulse shopping under control, you'll still have little lapses every now and then. So I'm not going to say it's never going to happen again. But once you get it slightly more under control, you will enjoy shopping a lot more because when you do go shopping, you'll know you have cash to spend. You won't be doing it when you're stressed out to try to make yourself feel better. And so it's going to be a much more enjoyable experience than maybe it was for you in the past because you won't have that sense of guilt afterwards when you get home with a purchase and then you have that nagging sense of guilt or that sense of stress of that you blew your budget and now you have to make do without some other things to pay off the things you bought. And so you'll enjoy your shopping a lot more. It'll still be relaxing. It'll still be fun. You'll still be able to buy the things you want to buy, but just in moderation and balance. We're all about balance on this channel. We talk about it all the time, finding balance in your budget, finding balance in your spending habits. And so this is part of my budgeting series and I felt like it was really important as I build my budgeting series, which you can find in my playlist on YouTube and I'll also link to in the description as well at the end here, or in the description box below. But it's, I felt like it was really important to address this issue of impulse spending because I would say in my experience, that's like the number one way I've run my budget over in the past is by, you know, I had maybe my budget planned out and I knew exactly what I had to spend and then Impulse spending got the better of me, had a bad day, went and spent a lot more money than I should have done, and then I was there kind of doing damage control later. So it's definitely a very important piece of learning how to stick to a budget is to get this piece of it under control. And so the very first thing that you want to start with when you're getting impulse spending under control is to really understand what drives that behavior. So you know that you're not a self-defeating lunatic who goes out and does stuff that's completely not in your best interest on purpose, right? Like you're a smart, intelligent person, you're rational, you're reasonable, and you would never intentionally, you know, undermine your goals here. And so what happens with this whole stress response though, is you'll have a stressor where maybe something triggers you or like, you know, we were talking about, you have an argument with a loved one or a friend, family member, have a bad day at work. And then, you know, then it's how do you make yourself feel better. And so maybe right now, the way you make yourself feel better is by spending impulsively and just going shopping, indulging in that retail therapy. But it's really important to be compassionate to yourself while you identify what are your triggers. So if you want to, you can even get a piece of paper and a pen, or if you have a mindful spending journal or a journal that you use, maybe start jotting down these different triggers as you notice them coming up throughout your day, your week, or your month. Notice what things send you running to the mall or send you scrolling through Amazon at 11 o'clock at night because you've maybe had a bad day at work or you've had an argument or you know you read a stressful news story that triggered something for you there's there's a real emotion that's important to acknowledge and address behind impulse spending and behind retail therapy so the first place to start is being compassionate to yourself and realize that, of course, we all have bad days. It's important to do something to calm ourselves down, make ourselves feel better, cheer ourselves up. Kind of that's a, that's a self care is to acknowledge when we're having a bad day and find a, a constructive way to deal with it. Retail therapy, though, is not self care because that just ends up creating financial chaos for ourselves and a big component of self-care is taking care of yourself financially and that and and really knowing that you've got your finances in order and they don't have to be a stress for yourself they're not a stress in your relationship and kind of knowing that you've got peace and and calm in that space in your life with your money right and so start by listing out those triggers and then next to the triggers maybe start listing out things that you could try doing next time that might be more soothing or as soothing um, 
than going shopping because let's be honest, I used to work in retail when I was in my 20s. I was a store manager for a fashion uh, brand. And basically when I was in the store and the way we were trained and the way we laid out the store and, and the way that retail marketing works, the whole experience is designed to make the customers come in stay as long as possible and spend as much as possible and preferably take out a store credit card while they're there. And so sometimes if you walk into a retail store and you walk out wondering what on earth hit you and where your money went, it's because it's they're not trying to take advantage of you necessarily, but it's just the way they stay in business, right? Is like they're not there running a charity. They need to sell stuff. And so a lot of these retail stores, the really well done ones, have the marketing set up. They've got the clothes beautifully displayed on the mannequins. And I'll tell you, as store employees, we used to spend hours and hours and hours before and after shop closing and everywhere in between keeping all the mannequins dressed and keeping the clothes nice and beautifully laid out and the jewelry beautifully laid out. There's whole playlists that they curate that are just to help you get more relaxed and in that calm frame of mind where you'll then stay longer. The associates are specifically trained to be friendly and whether or not they're happy to see you coming, they are specifically trained to be very polite, very helpful. You know, they get a lot of, of sales training along those lines as well. And so if you enjoy shopping and find it therapeutic, there's actually reasons for that. And it's because the retail industry knows what helps people relax and feel good about themselves in a certain situation because they've done a lot of research on this. And so it is a very soothing place to be because a lot of people have put a lot of time and energy and money into making sure that those stores are soothing and lovely places to be. And I'm not knocking them. I loved working retail. I love shopping, like I've said before. Everything in moderation, though, and everything in balance. And um, so just be aware that that's, you know, part of why that maybe taps into something that does help you feel better if you've had a bad day. Um, and then think through, are there other things you could do instead, though? Could you go for a walk with a friend? Could you go grab a coffee with a friend? Could you do, you know, could you get a new book from the library because that's free? Um, you know, and, and read a new book at your favorite cafe and have a sandwich or just do something that's going to be actually soothing to yourself where you're either out in nature, you're with friends, you're doing something social where you're connecting with other people because that's very therapeutic and, and very helpful as well. Because um, that's the other element of shopping is it tends to be very social and you're there chatting with the reps and you're chatting with the other shoppers and it can be just a lovely social time and that's wonderful as long as you've got a budget that you're sticking to and you're not coming home with thousands of dollars of shopping that you then have to hide from your spouse and let's be honest we've probably all been there at some point or other in our lives maybe there's some folks out there maybe that doesn't appeal to them because that's not the way they handle their stress but for most of us I think we've been there let's be honest and um, so anyway if you can really get to the bottom of what triggers you and then maybe some other things you could do beyond shopping that would help you process those emotions and feel better, then you're not going to end up in a situation that you'd rather not be in down the road financially from having gone and impulse shopped just because you were having you know, a legitimately bad day and legitimately needed a way to cope with that, but not go create more money stress for yourself and your family by spending a lot of money on. Frankly, too, if you think about it, a lot of the things that we buy when we're impulse shopping, we haven't planned to buy it. We don't have, you know, maybe our plan in place of what exactly we're looking for. We're just there. And so a lot of times you'll come home from those shopping sprees and it won't be anything you actually need. And then you'll be like, oh my gosh, like I really needed a new pair of shoes and I came home with four handbags. Like that's not super helpful. And, and so I think if you're able then to stop doing that, you'll just enjoy your shopping so much more because you'll actually be purchasing things you need or that you really love and have been saving for or whatever, instead of just buying whatever jumps off the rack at you in the, in the shops and maybe doesn't suit you or you had six of them already at home or whatever. So that's the first step is to just really identify and hone down on 
what it is for you that sends you running off to the nearest mall, <laughs> credit cards in hands, and then coming home, slinking home with bags of stuff that you're like, oh my goodness, I stimulated the economy, but I just bankrupted myself for the rest of my month. What's my spouse or my partner going to say about this? I hope there's a way that they're never going to find out and having kind of that guilt and perhaps a little bit of shame. And then maybe you have a fight with your spouse because they do notice this and get upset. And, you know, you just don't need to go there in the first place. If you can go, you know, take a yoga class or go take a walk with a friend or just go do whatever it is that soothes your soul instead. It can even be little things like these adult coloring books are really popular if you've got a musical instrument you play, go play some music. If you like to paint, go paint. You know, do something creative and, and enjoyable that way as well. And that can be very calming and centering and grounding because I think that's what we're all looking for at the end of the day. If we've got a stressful situation and a bad day that's got our emotions all dysregulated and chaotic and all over the place, all we want is to feel calm and better. And so sometimes doing those creative pursuits, you know, baking, something like that can be, even house cleaning can sometimes be very therapeutic. Sometimes I find that's great therapy is just clean the house because it just feels so good and go through your closets and get rid of stuff rather than bringing more things into your home. Maybe just, you know, get pack some stuff up for, for the thrift store instead. And so that's a really good place to start with that. So identify those goals and be compassionate to yourself. And then I have three questions that I like to ask myself before I, like if I'm on the brink of buying something and I'm just like really feeling the need to purchase something to deal with some stress and I really need kind of some little checks to just reel me back in in that moment when I'm just really not doing so well, you know, because of a bad day or whatever. So the first thing is, do I already have something like this at home? And this is a great question because this kind of is a little way to kind of stop and think through, do I already have one or more of these at home already? Like this might be a pretty thing that I'm looking at buying or a nice thing, but do I already have one that works just as well that I could use and not have to spend my money on this? And so that's the first place to start is think through, do I already have something like this at home? The second question is to think about, do I have space to put this item? And that's always a kicker for me because if I don't have anywhere to put it, then I probably shouldn't be buying it before I maybe do a closet clear out or do a bookshelf clear out. I'm, I'm famous for buying t books I love to read, so I always have mountains of books everywhere and it's like okay if I have literally run out of bookcase shelving space maybe it's time to go back and edit my collection before I add some more things in and so it's really good to look through and see physically how much space do you have in your home because this is one of the ways that people end up with stuffed cluttered houses garages that are so full of stuff they can't even put their cars in the garage and so then if a storm comes in they get all kinds of say hail damage or damage of, from the weather to their vehicles because they can't get their cars in the garage um you know, they, if you have a basement, <laughs> I never know if having basements is a blessing or a curse because they're so handy for storing things. But on the other side, they're so handy for storing things. And so if you have a basement, you know, that can end up becoming just a repository for every last thing that you ever found anywhere that you're like, oh, I might use that and you haven't used it in 10 years. And so look through how much space you have in your home before you go buying anything else and really evaluate that. If you've got a nice empty shelf to put that book on or a nice space in your closet to hang some more clothes or some empty space in your drawer to put some new things or you know more room in your closet to hang some things or some space in the garage to put that new tool you're looking at or that new sporting gear or whatever, then by all means, absolutely. But if you don't have space for it and you've already got something at home that kind of fits that need if you will then that's important to just you know take a pause and then really think through okay maybe this isn't the right time maybe i need to have a clear out and see because sometimes when we do those clear outs we discover that we had stuff we forgot about this happens to me all the time i'll be like oh my gosh i completely forgot i had this thing and this is great that i found it because now i can use it how wonderful is this 
So that's the second thing is to go through and see if you have space. And then the third thing is, do I have money to pay for this? Because you do not want to get yourself into the habit, especially when it comes to impulse shopping of thinking, well, I'll pay for that next month. I'll put it on the credit card and I'll pay it off next month. And you know what happens next month? There's something else. And you're like, oh, well, I'll pay that off next month. And then I'll pay that off. And you just get yourself in this vicious cycle where you're constantly running credit card balances because you did that every single month throughout the year and you wonder why you can never keep your credit cards paid off. And if you want to learn more about credit cards and how to use them responsibly, keep them paid off, I have a whole series on credit cards as well. You can find a link to that in the description box and also in my playlists for credit card use. And so feel free to check those out as well if you're struggling with your credit card balances and just credit cards in general creating stress for you. But yes, if you don't have cash in your accounts with your fun money accounts and or your discretionary spending, however, I like to call it fun money because it is, it's like that's money to not to burn because we want to make sure we're always using our money wisely, but money to spend on those kind of fun things that don't fall solidly into the needs category, right? And so if you don't have cash to pay for those and you don't have space and you might already have something at home that's going to fit the bill, then once you've asked yourself those questions, it just gives you that little checklist to run that purchase through and really helps you kind of slow yourself down a little bit on buying whatever it is you're looking at buying. And I think this is honestly even harder with online shopping than if you're in a store. Although when you're in a store, it can be tough because sometimes you're looking around the store and there's only one coat in that color. Or there's only one handbag or there's only one pair of shoes in your size in that color. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I have to get it right now or it'll be gone. I think it's also kind of that FOMO, you know, that fear of missing out that we get as well of that ner- worry. And Amazon has made this worse, by the way. They are so clever with their marketing, but they have really made this a little bit worse because they didn't used to do this. But if you notice now, if you put something in your cart or you're looking at putting something in your cart on Amazon, it'll say only two left order now, or only one left order now. And I've even noticed on Etsy, they've started to do this. If you're shopping for things, it has this little like icon of a unicorn. And then it says rare item, hard to find one left. And so the marketers and the retail companies are not working for you in this instance either. They are definitely not working in your budget's favor because they are setting you up for a fall in that sense where they're setting you up and saying, you better hurry, you're gonna miss this if you don't hurry up. Like buy it now or else you'll never get a chance to own this beautiful item ever again. And let's be honest, I mean, how many times Have you missed out on a purchase and like regretted it the rest of your life and never been able to find anything ever again that ever fit the bill and you were heartbroken and devastated? It doesn't happen too often. Like I can't off the top of my head think of a time when I missed out on an opportunity to purchase something and couldn't find something fairly similar or didn't go home and find a used version of it online for sale or a refurbished version or whatever. So... I think that the marketers really definitely push that whole uh, message of buy it now or you miss it and you're going to live with all this regret. I can personally tell you I have had more regret from things I've bought impulsively than from anything I didn't buy. So if we're talking on a, on a scale here, I would say err on the side of not buying versus buying impulsively because what you don't buy, you can feel deal with later and find something else but what you do buy you you know are probably going to have some sort of guilt some sort of maybe a sense of shame of oh my gosh I let myself down I I'm so undisciplined I can't believe I did this you know and kind of beat yourself up which you shouldn't be doing by the way but I think it's a natural kind of you know sense that all of us have when we've done something that we're not super proud of ourselves for and um especially when we're usually pretty good about stuff and have a bit of a slip. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that, whatever. And so that is where you can just ask yourself those three questions, really analyze everything. And then if you still, you know, are feeling that FOMO and everything, then the next thing that you want to do, if you're really feeling like terrible FOMO, 
is you can set what's called a cooling off period for yourself. And so this can be very, very helpful too. So in retail stores, the way you do this is you just ask nicely for them to put the item on hold for you. And so we used to do this all the time when I was managing retail and what we do is we would just go and put that item that the customer was interested in in the back with their name on it and their phone number. And we'd usually hold it for anywhere between 24 to 48 hours and we'd tell them that. And then if they wanted to come back in and purchase it, it was going to be there for them. And so that's a really easy way to do that in a retail setting if you're feeling really pressured and maybe it is the like the last of the thing you know sometimes that happens you know pe- retailers are always turning over their stock and so it might be the last of the thing that that's there unless you go really get creative and search all over the internet and so that is a good place to start is just put it on hold go home have a think if you still really want it you can always go back and purchase it and i would say the more expensive the item the more you want to practice that cooling off period I would say smaller purchases aren't going to do as much damage and so you don't necessarily have to do this but for larger purchases a couple hundred dollars or more you're going to want to really kind of get this as a habit for yourself if it's not an item you were planning to buy and had saved for and all this good stuff then try putting it on hold and then if it's an item you're shopping for online unless it's a vintage item or an antique or something like that chances are you will be able to hunt down another version of it somewhere else or the same item from another retailer or whatnot and so if it's an online you know item it's usually a little bit easier to find more of than sometimes in the retail stores depending on what you're looking for but again you can just put it in your cart and click that little button that says move to favorites save for later whatever the you know, thing is that the retailer, all the retailers now have this, you know, called move it to your favorites or whatever. And then it'll just be in your favorites cart. And unless it sells out or whatever, it'll still be there for you. And again, that just lets yourself, even if it's not 24 to 48 hours, even if it's just a couple of hours or overnight just to sleep on it, you know, that advice of sleeping on your decisions is really valuable because it is literally that process of being able to go to sleep, kind of give our bodies a chance to renew and be refreshed and wake up in the morning and we're usually thinking a lot more clearly and maybe, you know, our perspective on things have changed a little bit and at that point, if we're still like, yes, I really want this thing and I'll figure out a way to make it work in the budget, great, go ahead and purchase it. If you're like, oh, you know, now that I've thought about it, it's not actually quite what I was wanting or I'm not as excited about as I was 12 hours ago. The excitement has kind of worn off and now I'm not you know, sure that's quite even what I want. And so that cooling off period can be very valuable for you as well, just to kind of have that time to get out of the moment, get out of the FOMO, you know, get out of the fear of missing out, get out of the, you know, kind of the excitement and the emotions in that moment and just step back, reevaluate. You can go look at your accounts and see if you have cash for it. Again, that, get, that buys you time to see if you have space for it, if you've got something in your home that already does what you're looking for. Um, and you'll be so proud of yourself as you work through this process because the next time that you hit a point where you're there ready to go have a big impulse shopping retail therapy day, you're going to be able to catch yourself and be like, hey, I know at the end of the day that this isn't about shopping. This is about me feeling really sad or really emotional or really upset and I need to take care of myself but spending all my money for the next two months at Target and I'm not picking on Target believe me Target has been a source of solace and comfort for me for many years I I love Target so don't get me wrong I think that you know there's some places that you just go and just being there and getting a coffee and looking at pretty things even if you don't buy anything um, and, and just chatting with the people there can just be a real mood booster. So I'm not saying that it don't ever go to Target again or your favorite mall or whatever, absolutely not. Um, but what I'm saying is just to practice that self-care in that moment where you're feeling distressed and realize that there are other more constructive ways that aren't going to break the bank that you can process those emotions and that those emotions are real, they're important to pay attention to. And also I'd encourage you too to like reach out for professional help, reach out to a therapist, reach out to a counselor and reach out to someone who can help you build even more skills. Cause I'm just here saying, 
don't go the retail therapy route necessarily if you're having a, a difficult time. But we all have hard days, we all have hard weeks, and I think especially still, you know, in the wake of everything we've been through the past couple of years, you know, I think people are still struggling with, you know, having gone through a lot of financial hardship or health issues or whatnot, you know, the social isolation that we all experienced at one point or another during the pandemic. And so it's very, very important to reach out for help as well, especially if you're finding that it's not just a bad day here and there, but lots of bad days, you know, and lots of bad weeks and you just can't get yourself out of that funk. And so that's where it's very important to reach out to help and to work with a therapist who can really help you work through all of that. And so definitely do that as well, because that's going to be hugely helpful. And then in the meantime, while you're processing all of these emotions, you will not be breaking the bank. So that's going to ensure that while you're working through everything that you're also not going broke at the same time because nothing is worse than kind of knowing that you want to be somewhere but then going somewhere else because you make a different set of choices. And here we're all about wealth habits. And a major wealth habit is knock out that retail therapy, knock out that impulse spending because that can be a very big barrier to sticking to your budget. And then the other thing too that is a really good kind of like little saver if you've just gone ahead and had a big shopping you know, day at, at your favorite store, if you went ahead and bought it all anyway and you come home lugging back five giant carrier bags full of stuff that you're not even really sure you needed and you're pretty sure you can't afford, and you're fairly sure your spouse or partner is going to be pretty unhappy when they find those bags in the back of the closet where you stuff them back as far as they can go, right? Um, so if you do this, do not feel bad about it. But it's always good to um, check on the return policy for all the stores you're shopping at. If you are going to go on a big spending spree, at least go on spending sprees at stores that have good return policies. And what I've noticed is that the larger stores often have pretty flexible return policies. They won't have a restocking fee. They'll usually give you between 15 to 30 or more days to return items that are in good condition still, obviously. And so try, <laughs> try to steer yourself in the direction of stores with good return policies if you are really struggling with impulse spending and end up doing a lot of returning of your impulse spending. At least don't shop at stores that have no return policy or some of these smaller boutiques will have like a three-day return policy and then a big restocking fee. And a lot of, you know, like I said, re retail stores aren't running charities and so you, they're not necessarily super incentivized to take your stuff back once you've walked out the door with it. And so what I would suggest is preferentially, I'm not saying don't frequent, you know, beautiful boutiques, but definitely check return policies and make sure that there is a way to take your item back if you get home and 24 hours later you're like, oh my goodness, what was I thinking? Because we've all been there. And so that will give you kind of an out where maybe you tr just we're having such a horrible week that you're like, I don't care, I'm going shopping. And then, you know, reality hits later. And so that way you can just return your items, get your money back and no harm done, right? And so that's always fine. And don't feel bad about returning things either. I noticed sometimes, and I actually um, saw this happen when I was working as a store manager. I saw, I had a couple of other managers I worked with and they would sometimes get really pushy with people about bringing things back and almost kind of shame them for returning things and get up in their face because they didn't want to have those returns, you know, negatively affect their store revenue. And so A, kind of try to avoid places like that in the first place because that's not going to help you feel better about spending your money there. But B, just also be prepared for that too, that if there's a associate there working at the returns counter and they're asking you a lot of hard questions about returning things or kind of making you feel bad or kind of shaming you a little bit into being like, okay, never mind, I'll just keep it. Just remember, it's still your money and as long as the item's in good shape and it's in its original packaging and you've got the tags on it and you haven't, you know, washed it and worn it and then tried to haul it back or whatever, um, that most places kind of, that's the policy that this, the company has and they need to take your stuff back and not give you a hard time. And so just keep that in mind as well that you may encounter a little bit of resistance, but that it's worth it 
for your peace of mind, if you're like, okay, I feel really bad that I did this. I didn't really mean to spend my money that way. That's not the best use of my money. This was just me having a bad day. I'm going to forgive myself, have compassion for myself, and not let an associate at the store give me a hard time about it on top of the hard time I've already given myself. And so that is another little hack that you can use is just double check the return policies on these different stores and don't feel bad about returning things. Just try to make sure they're in very, very good shape and also return them as soon as you've realized that you kind of didn't make the best choice there. Just send everything right back. And again, if you need it later, we live in an era of mass production of everything. So it's not exactly like there's, you know, a, thank goodness we're out of the era of actual shortages during the pandemic when there were actual shortages of things. Thank goodness we're out of that. Now you can pretty much find anything that you want anywhere you want, any time of day. And so odds are you're going to be able to get that again if you really need it or you've got money in your budget down the line to buy whatever it is you were buying. But I hope that these were helpful, kind of a like a toolkit for you to cope with impulse buying. It is definitely something that at the core of it, there are real emotions that are tough that you need to take the time to process. Definitely get professional help as well in processing those emotions. But retail therapy is not the most, it's not like a bad or wrong way to process difficult emotions. It's just not helpful and it can kind of work against you in getting where you want to go in terms of your savings, in terms of growing your money, preparing for retirement, taking care of yourself in the future. It just really works against your financial self-care to go on a big retail therapy spending spree. So this is just a couple of really easy little pointers that can help you hopefully in the future just to kind of break yourself out of that habit and build those wealth habits instead of if you are going to go shopping, you know, ask yourself those three questions. Ask yourself if you have something in your home already that does what you want it to do and you don't need to buy another one. Ask yourself if you've got space to store whatever you're looking at buying and then ask yourself if you have cash rather than putting it on a credit card. Ask yourself if you have cash to purchase it so that you're not on top of it running up credit card debt as well as perhaps kind of stuffing down those difficult emotions that we all have from time to time that need to be processed in a more productive way that's going to help you actually feel better without the stress and guilt of a big shopping spree. So that's everything I have for you for today. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for being here today on my channel. And as always, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and if you would hit the bell notification button. And if you found anything that was particularly helpful in this video, I would love it if you would leave that in the comments as well. And then if you have any questions, definitely put those in the comments and follow up questions, anything about this. I'd be interested to see that too. I always read all of my comments and I appreciate you being here in our community. And if you have other little tips and tricks that help you combat impulse shopping and retail therapy, then definitely put that in the comments as well. I'd love to see that and you can share that with our community. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video.